I'm gonna move it closer so you uh, stare at it for a minute and try and figure out what it is. Um, in 1996, when I left the United States to become a Peace Corps volunteer in the Ivory Coast, I had one goal in mind. Um, I wanted to positively affect the life of one person. It's a pretty simple goal, and that's really what I wanted to do. I had no idea, and I would have never guessed, not in a million years, that it would be through working on the prevention of a three-foot-long worm. This worm is called guinea worm. It's a devastating human parasite that causes a terrible disease. It um, has a very simple but fascinating life cycle. So someone, after nine to 12 months of drinking contaminated water, usually on a lower extremity, leg, foot, ankle, a large ulcer forms. And in the middle of that ulcer, a blister forms. When this happens, it's burning, intensely hot, fiery, and very, very painful. So that person does what a person would do in subtropical Africa. They put their extremity, where the large ulcer and blister has formed, into a stagnant pool of water. When they do this, she, female, begins her emergence and she starts to push through the skin. And as she does, she opens, and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of larvae are pushed into that water source. It's 110 degrees. It's subtropical Africa, and someone else comes along, and they're thirsty. So with hands or a gourd that's been dried or a cup, they take that water and they drink it. And when they do, that life cycle begins all over again. She grows to three feet in length, so about from my shoulder to the end of my fingers, and she takes nine to 12 months to move through the body as she begins her process and her life cycle all over again. Guinea worm takes on average 30 to 60 days to come out of the body once it's extracted. The emergence coincides with the agricultural season in sub-Saharan Africa. During this time, a person can be completely incapacitated, and they can also have more than one worm coming out at a time. Um, when I was in the Ivory Coast in a very small village close to the one where I lived, I saw the woman and uh, she had a newborn child, but she couldn't walk. She had two worms emerging on her left foot, one worm emerging on her right foot, and a, mer a worm emerging on her left breast. She couldn't walk and she had a newborn child. This disease has no cure or vaccination. It can only be prevented. There are major consequences to having this disease. People can't farm during the peak of the agricultural season. They can't tend to their animals. They can't sell surplus agricultural crops. If they have children, they can't send them to school. They need them to stay home. And if they are children, they can't walk to school, much less focus. Imagine having a fiery, burning ulcer with a worm hanging out of it for 30 to 60 days. Guinea worm disease has had major barriers to social and economic progress in dozens of countries. This disease is a disease of the poorest of the poor. It's a disease of poverty. It is known as a neglected tropical disease. There are 17 neglected tropical diseases. There are an estimated 1,200,000,000 people that live off of less than a dollar a day that are infected with one or more neglected tropical diseases. 1,200,000,000 people. Further to that, there's an estimated 
700 million people that are at risk of infection from one of these 17 neglected tropical diseases. To put this into perspective, of the bottom billion, approximately 40 million are infected with HIV AIDS, compared to 1 billion 200 million infected with neglected tropical diseases. And the neglected tropical diseases receive only 0.6% of the total international development assistance compared with 37% for HIV AIDS. So here enters the Carter Center. Since 1986, the Carter Center has worked with a coalition of other organizations, the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, and others to assist national governments and their own guinea worm disease eradication programs where guinea worm disease is endemic. Guinea worm eradication program relies on behavioral change. This change is taught through health education in how to use specific interventions to prevent the disease. Remember, there's no cure and there's no vaccination and you don't know you have it for nine to 12 months until she begins to emerge. So through health education and specific interventions, we teach people how to prevent the disease. We believe that when people are given the necessary tools, knowledge, and access to resources, they can change their lives dramatically. The interventions consist of health education resources, filter materials, medical assistance, and water source treatment. Health education component takes the form of dramas, stories, songs, and demonstrations. They all focus on teaching people how to stop guinea worm disease from infection all the way to prevention and to assist others and their communities to do the same. This example is in South Sudan, and it's focusing again on the story of a community working together to prevent guinea worm disease. Cloth material is used to filter out guinea worm larvae in the water. And these are technologically and culturally appropriate. Sometimes women keep water in large barrels, so we make large frames. When they come with water on their head, they can just pour the water right through the frame and into the barrel. The whole household's protected. We make them in small, tiny forms to fit inside of plastic jugs, and we make individual pipe filters that act like straws that someone can use right at a water source. We also use case containment centers. When we find a patient with an emerging worm, we try and contain the case. So this means having the person come to a place where we can provide medical attention, we can give them food, water, and health education. Remember, it takes 30 to 60 days for the worm to be completely extracted from the body. So we need to keep this person, this patient, in a case containment center for the duration of that period of time so they cannot contaminate a water source. We need to be 100% sure that a water source is not contaminated with more larvae, thus stopping the process and intervening. These tiny guinea worm larvae start their life inside of a water flea, and we treat with a safe chemical stagnant water sources to minimize the water flea population. So all of these interventions, have been carried out by more than 23,000 village volunteers, people that volunteer to assist their communities in preventing guinea worm disease. This has had pretty dramatic results. Behavioral change combined with these interventions, starting in 1986, an estimated 3,500,000 cases of guinea worm disease in 21 countries. In 2012, only 542 cases of guinea worm disease were reported in four countries. Right. 
And by the end of April, in two countries, only 37 cases reported so far this year. And further to that, and what, uh, what really <laughs> changes the beat of my heart is the 80 million cases of disease that we've averted by preventing, teaching people how to prevent themselves from guinea worm disease. There's a, a woman in a small farming village in Nigeria. Um, she attributed the approved improved standard of living in her community to the elimination of guinea worm disease. She could sell her surplus agricultural crops and pay her children's school fees. She attributed all of it to the development of her community by eliminating one neglected tropical disease, guinea worm disease. So without a cure, through behavioral change and other interventions aimed at interrupting guinea worm disease, 80 million people have not had to suffer. This means 80 million people can tend their crops. They can take care of their animals. They can sell surplus agricultural crops, improving their standard of living. They can send their children to school. Guinea worm disease is not a symptom of poverty, but a cause of poverty. So eradicating guinea worm contributes to ending poverty. So the guinea worm eradication program has proven that something can be done about one of these 17 neglected tropical diseases. It's no longer neglected. We focused on it. And look at the numbers. Look at what we've been able to do. So I believe that a focus on controlling and eliminating the remaining 16 neglected tropical diseases could drastically reduce poverty for the bottom billion of the world. The gap between the rich and poor could begin to close considerably. So if these diseases are no longer neglected, I contend that that one life that I wanted to positively affect could probably be about 1 billion, 200 million, maybe even 2 billion, 700 million. Thanks. <laughs>